To write the name for compounds that have transition metals, we need to take into account ionic charge. So in this very general table here, you can see the trend for ionic charge. Some are very clear, like group one, they're all plus one. Group two, those elements have a charge of plus two. When you get to the center, you have the transition metals, and they have variable charges. That means sometimes, for instance, iron is plus two, and sometimes it's plus three. And as we name compounds, we need to take that into account. Let's try a few examples to make this really clear. We'll start with FeCl2, iron two chloride. For FeCl2, we'll write the name of the transition metal. We looked that up on the periodic table. It's iron. And then we can write the nonmetal, the chlorine. When we're naming ionic compounds here, we take the INE off the end and change that to IDE. So right now we have iron chloride. Because iron's a transition metal, it's right there in the middle of the periodic table, we're gonna to need to take into account charge. So we look at the periodic table, we'll use a little more specific version here, and we see chlorine has a charge of minus one. We'll use that information to figure the charge out on the Fe. So since I have two chlorines, two multiplied by minus one, that means I have a minus two charge, and the charge of the iron is going to have to be plus two to balance that out. Now that I know the charge of the iron, I put parentheses, write the Roman numeral two, and the name for FeCl2 is iron two chloride. Understand that this two, it tells us the charge, it really doesn't tell us anything else. It says we have one iron atom with a plus two charge. Let's try another one. FeCl3. Pause and see if you can figure this one out. So we write the name of the transition metal, that's iron, and then we write the nonmetal, that's the chlorine. We change the INE to IDE. So now we have iron chloride, and we go to our periodic table, and we see that chlorine has a negative one charge. We have three chlorine atoms, three times minus one, that gives us minus three. So this one iron atom has to be a plus three to balance those out. So we write parentheses and we write the Roman numeral three. That makes the name for FeCl3 iron three chloride. And again, this three right here tells us that iron has a plus three charge. So pause and write the name for these two compounds, PBO and PBO2. Note that PB, lead, isn't technically a transition metal, but it is a metal that has variable charges, so we'll use the same rules as transitional metals. For PB, we write lead and oxygen for O. We get rid of the ending YGEN and write IDE. Since oxygen has a charge of minus two, we know that the lead has to have a charge of plus two that makes this lead two oxide. For PBO2, we have lead and oxygen becomes oxide. We know oxygen is minus two and two times minus two, that gives us a minus four. That means lead here must be a plus four. And we write parentheses and we write IV, which is the Roman numeral for four. The name for PBO2 is lead four oxide. When we have compounds with a polyatomic ion, that's when we have two or more nonmetals together attached to our metal. It's the same process, we just need to name the polyatomic ion. To do that, we look up CO, that's cobalt, which is a transition metal. And for the NO3, we need to look at a table of common polyatomic ions. If we do that, we go to the table and we find NO3, and that turns out to be the nitrate ion. So we write nitrate, and we note that the charge on the nitrate ion is minus one. If we have two times minus one, that gives us a charge of minus two. So each of these nitrates has a minus one, and we have two of them. That means the cobalt has to be a plus two. We put our parentheses here, and we write the Roman numeral two, and that makes the name cobalt two nitrate. So pause and give this one a try. Fe is iron, and then NO3 
is the nitrate ion. We can look that up on the list of common polyatomic ions. So we write nitrate. And nitrate has a minus one charge. It says that right there on the table. We have three of them, three times minus one. That gives us a charge of minus three. That means the iron will have a charge of plus three. We write our parentheses. We write the Roman numeral three. And the name for this compound is iron three nitrate. As is always the case in chemistry, there are a few exceptions. For example, zinc is always plus two and silver is always plus one. So if we have something like ZnCl2, we just write zinc chloride. Since zinc is always plus two, we don't need the Roman numerals. Likewise, silver, if we had AgCl, we would just write silver chloride. We don't need to add Roman numerals. For lots more practice naming and writing chemical formulas, visit Breslin.org. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.